Mm-hmm. And this defensive line, per Dan Campbell, per Easy, per everyone down watching camp, this defensive line is showing out. And Levi, oh, what a what a what an interesting figure, character, player, situation. Yeah, uh, 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 so much talent, so much athletic through the roof. He's just dealt with some serious injuries, back injuries. That just the fact that explosion, that ability to get better. But he seems to be healthy, and he seems to be showing out. And I think. I don't know if they knew it was going to be like this, but with the pairing of Marcus Davenport and his question marks, but high upside, Levi O and his high upside, this is probably why they didn't go add that other edge rusher opposite Hutch. Yeah. Opposite Hutch. Let's um if you could play if you could play that video, JB, of Dan Campbell talking about Levi O, he's noticing Levi O out there, and he made a comment about him. Being one of the best defenders he sees out on the field. Check this mm. out. Well, I would tell you, this started in the spring. You know, we kind of mentioned him. He, he's earned it. I mean, he's, it's clear that he's, he's one of the best. I mean, it's just clear. And, and uh, he plays with violence. Uh, he's stout. He's fundamentally better than he's ever been. And, uh, and he's shown that he has some versatility between the big end and base and three technique. He can play some big end and sub, you know, and nickel. Um, and he's just earned it. I mean, and so he, he continues to go. I, he feels good. Um, and so he's in, a, he's in a good place. He's earned it. Like, this is a story a of Lions place. players. One of the yeah. best out there. He's earned it. The talent, we know it's there. Now it's, all right, we got to see you on the field. And when you talk about this defense, whether they play a lot of 4-3, maybe some nickel, maybe they move to some dime with, you got Ennis Rakestraw, Emmanuel Mosley, Amik Robertson all competing. Like, there's an opportunity where we see six DBs out there, and you're going to need some pass rush there alongside Reader, Aleem. Maybe they play some 5 2, and you got DJ Reader in the middle, mm-hmm. Aleem and Levi O next to Reader, and then on the outside, Hutch and Davenport. It's nasty. L- like, what do you do? We need them to be healthy. We're going to factor in Broderick. Unfortunately, Kaminsky's out indefinitely. Mm-hmm. What was it? Uh, Natane Mutai. He's out for likely the season with the shoulder injury. But guys, what yeah. what what could Levi out? What kind of difference could a player like this make for this entire defense? You know what stands out to me is just the fact that they have so much more depth, so much more reliability this year that you know you don't want to see a guy like a Kaminsky go down. You know, and he was going to play a decent role for this team, but it's not earth shattering. Last year, it seemed like this team was literally one injury away from the defensive line needing some serious help. And that was with us already believing that they needed to make a move to bolster the defensive line last year, even after they tried a couple different options and and ultimately with Bruce Irvin being the most popular (laughs) after he made that impactful hit against Carr. But you know what? I I think it represents what this team can be as it relates to depth. When we're not talking about injuries, then you're talking about keeping your players even more fresh. That's what I'm focusing on and keying in on right now. When you're talking about longevity, I think that that also goes to keeping your players in a position to be more healthy, keep your players in a position to be more fresh, and keep your players in a position where they are getting reps as well. And I believe this team is set up to be able to do that and have some pretty solid rotations. It is, and it's a massive bonus if you get a healthy Marcus Davenport for an entire season. Mm-hmm. Not just because he's a mammoth of a human. He's strong, he's powerful, and he's quick off the line. When he plays, he sacks the quarterback. But he's also now realized, like, he's not a young cat anymore. He's not old. But he's not young, and having gone through this adversity, he's he knows what he needs to do to get his next contract. He also knows what he needs to do to get to a Super Bowl. And you see him in this next video we're going to show, courtesy of Detroit Podcast, our guy Doc from All Lions Shout over at out. SI. Um, he talked about just the entire defensive unit and just everybody making everybody better. Listen to this. Again, courtesy of Doc Macaroon at Detroit Podcast on X. SI's All Lions publication. You know, people on the outside talk about who's going to play well and get the sacks opposite of Aiden Hutchinson. Do you feel like that that can be answered with you on this roster? I mean, hey, honestly, there's a lot of guys, like I just said earlier, that, you know, can definitely get the sacks and work off of his production and then just, you know, be a catalyst. So. Do you think people should just calm down then, realizing this defensive line can get the job done? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm, that type of confidence. Yeah. yeah Simple, this, to the point. Yeah. Yeah, but we got dudes. You, you know, it, he had that same kind of ride confidence that Jared Goff had when he was in that that podcast. And he said, "You know, I'm gonna be here for a while before yeah. the pre- before the contract." And we all knew, "Oh, this guy's locked in." Yeah, that's what it looks like. 
this team looks locked in. The coaches are happy. I, I don't go through – when we go through training camps, we've heard when the, when the coaches have been upset or want to be able to see something different out of their team, but we're not hearing that out of these guys. We're hearing that they're locked in. We're hearing the reports from the people that are down at training camp like, yo, they look, they look pretty good. They look disruptive. They look disruptive. Yeah. I like it. I like it. KG, when I play or, or fired up. When I when I when I give you some of those like hypothetical defenses with with these athletes, whether it's four or five out there on defense, and then whatever they decide to do at nickel. Yeah. And, and cornerback. And mm-hmm. we talked a lot yesterday about Enos Rakestraw and the physicality he plays with in the nickels. Is this defense is it set up to defend quarterbacks like Jordan Love, like Caleb Williams, the 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 types of quarterbacks that the Lions have historically struggled in no, because of yeah. all this athleticism and pressure they can get, not just up the middle, but from the edges and from the outside. No, I believe so. Um, when you look at everybody that they've acquired on this defense, especially this past offseason, one thing that stands out immediately is versatility. And I know we always say that jokingly, versatility. versatility. You know, but it's the truth. That, that is something that this regime really values, man. They like being able to have you master in one area, but also being able to use you in another, man. And I think that bodes well, especially Mm. defensively, because we need people that can get to the quarterback. That has always been the issue. But if you can take a Levi Anzarike out of the middle and maybe play him on the edge a little bit, I think that goes a long way. When you can take a, a, a Aiden and put him in the middle, that goes a long way. There's things that they can do to, to help <laughs> supplement <laughs> some of the things that they've been deficient in. So I just really hope that it looks good on the field because like Flannel Sam would always say, no training camp victory laps. We need to see it on the field. But – I, I think that they've done a good job, at least, of, of player acquisition and trying to make sure that they have the pieces in place to be able to mix it up, to be able to do different things defensively, especially on the line and in the secondary. Yep. We're going to see it a whole lot this year. Because you know what we did see on the field last year? We were all calling for AG to make some schematic changes when it was clear. Even the organization was stating, yeah, we're going to have to bring in some more talent. And when he did make that schematic change, I saw so much versatility in terms of hiding their plays. You didn't know if it was going to be a blitz. You didn't know if there was a blitz, where it was going to, which layer of the defense it was going to be coming from. Yeah. Like, and now you're giving him talent, not the backups that probably were overextended in their role. Exactly. Now you're giving him talent, and not just talent, depth, the backups, the rotation. Mm-hmm. Think about what AG is going to be able to do. Like, when you talk about no excuses, I'm not one of those guys that's like, all right, time to prove something, AG. I believe this is a year where AG is actually going to prove something. Based on what I saw last year, you give him the talent, how does it look now? And you talked about versatility. Levi O is a perfect example because they've had him a little bit on the inside, on the outside. Like They're trying to find which is his best role, but they're probably going to use him in both. And then we heard Dan Campbell yesterday talk about Matthew Betts, and we're going to throw James Houston into this conversation too. They initially were, were throwing a lot at him at the Sam linebacker position. They decided – Let's pull it back a little bit. Let's make sure he can master the edge rushing first. It yeah. just seemed a little early to throw that all in. So they want their guys to be versatile, but they're not afraid to pull back if needed, especially yeah. with young developmental guys. I'm not saying that is Levi O, but I'm saying exactly what you were pointing out. They value that versatility and guys that can help in all different schemes, all different strategies, even touch, uh, 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 dropping back into coverage and, and intercepting the ball. Mm-hmm. It's wild. Justin, I know you had something to say about the defensive line. I definitely do. And it's the improvement is going to be seen, especially when what is something that has killed the Lions over the last three years consistently? Mobile quarterbacks? Yes, sir. Yeah. Exactly. Mobile quarterbacks. The run-stuffing ability of DJ Reader to not be pushed around in the middle. The edge rushing hopefully improving between Marcus Davenport and Houston should all make it so that that is less of a weakness for the Lions. Also, that guy on that back wall. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And yes, Terry on Arnold. Let's show that. They are both gifted tacklers. Carlton Davis, That's another so good tackler. This secondary now has good tacklers where quarterbacks get on the outside. They're not just going to be running by our DBs because we can't tackle. They're going to be scrapped. They're going to be hit. They're going to be met by the dogs that we have on the outside. And that, to me, is going to make such a big difference in games. <laughs> like when we play Kyler Murray in Arizona. Or we good even point. play Brock Purdy and Jordan Love when they show a little bit of their mobility. I think that it's just going to be such a big key for us to be able to tackle at a much higher clip than we were last year.